Jeff, you okay? You hear me all right there? All right, I got the thumbs up from the back there. Excellent. So I try to operate both microphones here without causing any sort of feedback or anything. So if you don't mind or anything, I apologize in advance. So um, first of all, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, it is an afternoon. I already see everything's already behind. Sorry about that. Uh, I want to thank especially all the guys. I know there's a couple guys I want to call out specifically. Uh, Matt Passy, Dave Robbins, Kevin Wake, all our guys, and Scott Wake. Guys, I was sure we were going to be on the golf course and we're going to actually miss this meeting, but they're actually in here today, so thanks for making them here today. Um, although it would, probably would have been a better suggestion, actually. It's a beautiful day out there. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, obviously, hunting for new opportunities is our theme. There's a couple guys with orange on who actually got the message, Scott, and I think, uh, thanks over there, sorry. There we go. So you got some more into the back there. It's a beautiful thing. So we decided to have a little fun with the theme this year, certainly knowing how much uh, consternation we've had in terms of uh, the politics and things so this year. So we're going to try to have a little bit of fun and still get you the kind of information that we like. But So we're going to start off here. Why did we choose the hunting theme? Well, first of all, Tim's actually going up to deer camp tonight after this presentation, so he's, he's got a lot in the clock already, so he's already going to have his gear with him, so it seems to be a natural fit. This weekend is open of season. Uh, it's an enormous economic impact on the state of Wisconsin. This one estimate $2.5 billion on hunting and related expenditures in the state of Wisconsin over here. That's a phenomenal, yeah. And that's a, good, a good part of that is Tim and maybe you can, and not as much to me as a second extent. I do want to make sure that you understand the level of qualification you have here, the two hunters you have here before you. Uh, Tim is very, they might just have a pheasant hunter, a specialist, we're still going deer hunting this weekend. That's his dog, Welker, who is just awesome. Uh, if you never get a chance to watch him in action, I highly recommend it. Um, so this is, a, this is a, a live shot. I got to take this. I had the, the, the privilege of going out with him one, one frosty morning last year. Uh, it was a great morning, and it's a, a, great, a great team. So I tried to go out and figure out a, a photo to, to demonstrate my equally my prowess, and that's what I did. <laughs> so I enjoy the outdoors. I enjoy going out hunting. I, I, there's a reason they call it hunting and not shooting. Uh, so it's, uh, that's usually a little bit more my speed in terms of uh, where we go. So, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim Simmon, and uh, he'll go through our update for the beginning of this year. Uh, thanks very much. Neil, um, I'm going to move around a little bit um, during my presentation, um, and and of course, as everyone knows, it is that time again. Um, orange really is the new black. So, um, <laughs> oh wait a minute, oh it's quiz time. It's not hunting time. It's quiz time. Ready? We're going to start off with a little quiz. Okay, from 2010 through 2016, multifamily housing permits. I'll pay single family permits by a ratio of three to one. Three to one. Three to one. Three to one. Anybody? Everyone? Three to one? Consensus? Okay, this is in fact a trick question. But there are no losers today. Uh, I think some are over here. So you get some hand warmers when you're in this game. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> supposed to be cold this weekend. In reality, during this period of time, the key word to, to look at is permits. Uh, we've heard in our department, especially, oh, all these multifamily units. All these. In fact, during this period, there's actually been more single family units permitted, not approved necessarily, but permitted than multifamily. So, as uh, Tom and the folks from the school district know, um, that's having an impact on things in some period. So let's uh, move on. We're going to look at single family development in general. My presentation basically is going to look at kind of the year behind us primarily and look at where we're going to go a little bit in the future. And, uh, and then I'll turn it back, back to Neil. Um, so looking at now just single family development, kind of where, where it's taking place uh, over the last year in the city. Uh, um, a few, few primary neighborhoods um, along, the, along the city's west side. Um, we've got uh, Providence neighborhood, Fox Point, Meadow Crossing, Ironwood Estates, Smith's Crossing, uh, Liberty Square, we're seeing more activity in the Meadow Crossing on the city's east side. So believe it or not, uh, with the exception I'd say of, of Smith's Crossing, a lot of these neighborhoods are getting full. Like the schools we have in the community are actually our city's getting full too. Um, so that's where a lot of single family developments happened uh, over this past year. 
Um, we've had a few new new uh, replats um, that are are, uh, are have been approved or we're going to be looking at on the upcoming year. Um, one of them that's going to be uh, fairly significant is is oops, wrong button. Um, is this one up here in the north. Some of you may, may recognize that that was called the Token Creek uh, Conservancy of States. That's going to be replatted. That's also the site of where one of the elementary schools is going to go. So that's, that's going to be a significant change to the north side of the city. And then an area of the Liberty Square uh, neighborhood was also replatted. Um, a portion of what's called West Prairie Village uh, neighborhood uh, was also replatted um, due to some wetlands. Um, so we expect to see a lot more single family development in that area. Uh, in the coming year. Uh, so multifamily development, um, look at, at uh, things we've seen this year specifically. Um, there's a 60 unit building in Smith's Crossing, Crossing the School, many of you are probably familiar with that. Um, or coming up, so again, the, the key word I used before is permits. What we have coming up are, are things that have been approved but not yet permitted. So. That's where we're going to see a fairly healthy increase in uh, multifamily units. We've got 228 unit plans south of the Menards right here. In fact, um, we expect to see that that uh, plan come in in about two weeks. Um, there are, oops, I'm about to begin, sorry. Um, 284 units west of Marcus Theater. Those those have been approved. We expect those to be um, started in spring of 2017. Um, Main Street. Um, That's actually not west of the, of the school. So the Main Street one, uh, I've got to tell you about that this one is, is uh, hot off the press. We just got the plans for this like two days ago. Some of you are probably familiar with this pro project, but it's kind of neat uh, redevelopment opportunity. It's a 74 unit building, multifamily building on Main Street where next to uh, St. or the uh, uh, Goodwill. Sorry, sorry, St. Vincent. Vincent. The old, the old uh, miners, for those of you who know that. So this is the um, architectural rendering. The, the building, the 74-unit building is going to be stepped back from Main Street. Long Main Street will be about five or six tenant commercial space. So that's going to be a, a significant, I don't know, use the word game changer. But unless anybody just wants us to leave the old Hamida store there. Okay. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? So this is going to be a big change uh, for Main Street, hopefully in an in in excellent direction. This is going to change both the look and obviously the density of the area. It's going to, going to hopefully spur some additional redevelopment in that area. So again, like I said, we just got that a couple days ago. Um, and that will be, uh, actually that's that's going through staff review right now. And their, their target to begin is in spring as well. So, front on Buena Vista? Um, actually, well, the, the the frontage right here is Main Street. The back side of the apartment will be Wayne's. So it'll take that whole that whole space. All right, let's see. Now let's move to uh, commercial development. We've had a lot, as you know, a lot of commercial development in addition to uh, residential development taking place this year. Um, downtown, West Side, Main Street, um, in the business park as well, so really all, all over town. Uh, looking, starting with our, our downtown, um, Portropolis has moved downtown from their site uh, off of 151 in Bristol. Um, Sales is going to be opening soon. Uh, they're moving from their current location to uh, where uh, Tolteca used to be. Um, there, how many people know we have an electric charging station downtown? We have one. Uh, Eddie Scale House um, did some. Uh, Remodeling to the to the back or the north side of their property for outdoor seating. So there's stuff going on. Just wanted to point uh, downtown. So this is what this looks like: the electric charging station. Um, it was uh, <coughs> primarily operated, I think, by um, subsidiaries of Nissan. So it's targeted toward the Nissan Leaf. But they they've uh, instituted a, a program uh, countrywide. In fact, you may have seen uh, in I think it was last Saturday <coughs> they installed one in, in uh, Madison as well. So anyway, that's that's a charging station that's uh, downtown. Uh, let's see. Now we're going to go to the west side. Um, nothing's going on there, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the arrows will. I'll just quickly go through some of the some of the spaces. Um, certainly, the the um, Prairie Lakes area. Uh, Noodles and Company is coming. Stein Hoffels, I think, is in the building. 
Um, Starry Financial is opening soon. No, oh, they already did. Uh, or if they're not open already, I know they're, they're uh, working a few things out, so they should be open. Um, uh, Marcus Theaters added two screens in the process of adding two screens, and finally, um, an arts program. Um, recently, after two, be, yeah, this, two years this month, we started, or, I'm sorry, two years this month, two years ago, we started working with them on that project. So that's going to significantly change um, that area. Here's a biggie, too. Um, Suffrage is getting a uh, very large hotel. Uh, Neil may talk about that a little bit more in his presentation. But this is going to be a really nice attractor to, to the west side, but Sun Prairie in general. It is a six story hotel, will include 10,000 square feet of meeting space and a uh, Johnny's Italian Steakhouse restaurant. So that's uh, quite a significant piece, too. They're hoping to uh, start in spring as well. So a lot, lot's going to be going on next year. All right. Quiz time again. Here we go. Let me go to the back. Okay. What is the significance of the following years to Sun Prairie? 1837, 1868, and 1958. And to win, you have to identify all three of those. Ooh. Anybody want to take a shot? <laughs> <laughs> Incorporated. Anybody? What's the name? Discovered, founded, incorporated. Ooh, close. Really close. Really close. That, in fact, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Discovered Village City. So you get to enjoy your cheesesteak and your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Main Street, we're seeing some things happening there as well. Uh, Jennings and Wolt uh, purchased the site along Main Street. This is, and you, you've probably seen the, the, um, the pad for, for that building. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. That's the site of the old uh, Marathon gas station. Um, so that's gone. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a nice addition to uh, the transition toward, toward uh, the old downtown area. So that'll be very nice. Uh, also in that area, we've got a couple new tenants across the street from where, where Jennings and Walt, uh, Badger State Builders, and uh, Lefkoe Insurance. So very good. Um, so we, we, we talked a little about uh, residential development, commercial development, as you know, very recently, last week it was. Um, we've got two new elementary schools coming. Uh, they are going to be located in this area, uh, north of Stonehaven, on the city's north side, and then along uh, Grand Avenue, south of what's called the Ireland Estates neighborhood. So we, in fact, are meeting with uh, school district representatives after Thanksgiving to start going through the timeline uh, uh, for the construction permitting process and so forth, but in wherever time is, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the target opening of those uh, schools is fall of 2018. Did I get that right? Yep. Okay. So um, the development of those schools is likely to have an impact around some of the surrounding neighborhoods as well. Okay, now industrial. Uh, this was a big one up in the uh, just north of the business park. The city uh, annexed this land uh, recently. This is the, the photo on the right is, is uh, the College Town building under construction. Um, Riddell uh, is, the, is the parent company, so that's going to be a, a big addition. Um, as Sun Prairie keeps growing to the north. So that was excellent to see. Royal Publishing is building a new uh, warehousing building in the business park. We Energies is uh, going to start construction soon as well. A um, couple other things, and then, again, this isn't all of them, but these are just some of the major ones wanted to hit. So hopefully, I uh, did not intentionally leave anyone out. But uh, Paul and Lindsay, you see those nice uh, features in front of their, their building. Uh, Madison Kip uh, added, I think, 90,000 square feet uh, this year. Uh, and then uh, local source foods up in the business park opened as well. So there's a lot going on. Uh, another thing that kind of flew under the radar perhaps, but along the um, Reiner Road, and this is for the southwest portion of the city, uh, Reiner Road and 151, uh, our comprehensive plan has recently changed from office park designation to the business park. So we've been meeting with the developer um, regarding the development of this area south of, of Capitol Drive. And so hopefully we'll see some 
investment and activity take place there. Um, that's going to require annexation and um, an urban service area even for sewer extension, um, and that's going to be taking place early next year. So there could be more more uh, business park development along the city's southwest side along the along the uh, 151 corridor. So, um, as a, yes, question. Where are you going to annex back from? Who owns that property now? That's Tom Burke. Tom Burke. So Thank let me back up. Good question. Let me back up. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to shout off. So the the lands uh, <coughs> that are owned, some of the lands that are owned by, or, or not owned, but are within the town of Burke are going to become the city of Sun Prairie by the end of 2036. Sun Prairie is in a four-party agreement with DeForest, between us, Town of Burke, and Madison. By the end of 2036, all of Burke will be dissolved. So the lands uh, in this in this area, um, in the town of Burke, are part of that development agreement. So this is really what's called an attachment, which is another form of annexation. But the process to get those lands into the city is much simpler because we already have this agreement with uh, Madison, DeForest, and Burke. So that's that's just a step in the process, but it's, it's a little bit more uh, formality than anything. So um, again, we're, we're growing. All right, now, um, as with hunting and communities, maintenance of what you have uh, is very important uh, for proper function, both of cities and you know, <coughs> guns and pants, boots, etc. Um, it's hard to pick up good public domain images. I don't know much about Hunter. She is, but she cares about maintenance. So. <laughs> uh, this is from this morning. It's open. I can see. I can see. Um, between Grand Avenue and Windsor 19. So that's all open. Um, the the um, multi-use path along QBE's property is almost done. There are some uh, apron approaches that are still being worked on. But um, that's a huge um, improvement to get people into and out of the city. That includes, as you can see, bike lanes the whole way. Um, uh, off street on street bike lanes. So very big improvement for um, safety and uh, people traveling through that area. And uh, that took just a little longer than it was supposed to, but it took. So that's a big thing. So looking forward to next year, now regarding maintenance, we've had a, a number of roads reconstructed. This year, this is just a, a snapshot of, of some of the uh, activity in terms of road maintenance that's gonna happen. Next year, these are, in orange, the roads that are, gonna, are scheduled for reconstruction. They're not all gonna take place at once, so uh, they're gonna be phased in. And then this stretch of uh, Wilburn up in the business park is uh, scheduled for a pavement re rehabilitation, so that's not full reconstruct. But the, but the uh, segments in orange are full reconstruction. Um, okay, so when you go hunting, you don't necessarily always go to the same place. Sometimes it's fun to go to new areas and new lands. Well, as cities grow, you gotta start looking for new areas, new growth, new opportunities. Um, as you've seen, there's a lot of stuff going on in the city, and we're starting to get full. And we gotta start thinking about where we go next. And so as we do that and contemplate that, we have to be cognizant of forces that are going on around us, because if we just say, well, we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, last night was a public information meeting held by the DOT that has already identified potential corridors for an interstate bypass around some prairie. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but this is, this is fairly <laughs> under study. So they have identified four possible routes. Um, two of them go right around the Patrick Marsh area. That could have a big impact on the city. This would be somewhere around the Happy V and 151 interchange. Um, this information is on DOT's website. Um, stay tuned. They're looking for the, the, the um, public participation process. So, so um, <coughs> we're going to weigh in uh, uh, if you'd like. So anyway, so we can't just sit back idly and just kind of let things happen happen because other people are planning around us, and we need to uh, we need to. Um, plan as well if we want to drive our own, our own destiny. So, five, this is the final, it's quiz time again. Uh, I'm going to go back here. And this, this one, maybe a little bit, little bit different. So in 2016 this year, for deer hunting, back tags will no longer be required because, which one? 
C. C. Are you sure? Yeah. Who said C? I don't see it. How would you know that? <laughs> <laughs> that is for my brother here. No. <laughs> and you're the grand prize winner. Oh, 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 no. No. Oh. 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 All right. Oh. 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 It's, it's the one pack. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a single pack, but it actually it has the it's word just here in it. <laughs> so it's important, to, it's important to there you go. It's important to know what you're shooting at, and important to keep your eyes on the target. So that's something we need to do as a city as well. And with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Neil. <laughs>